Hey, so check it out. I've got this little Skywatcher AZ GTI, right? Yeah, AZ GTI telescope mount. This is a really cool little mini telescope mount. It's good for small, like payload telescopes. Um, and uh, you, you can put it on a wedge and actually use it in equatorial mode, but it's great for things like the Hadley telescope that you've seen on my channel, uh, my other small uh, stuff. And um, I use it only a little bit, and uh, now I've got a problem with it, and that is the, uh, the azimuth axis clutch. There's a little knob here to lock the clutch on the azimuth axis. Uh, something is not something is not right here. So uh, this is the locking knob here, and when you tighten it, uh, it feels like it's stripped. You, you can, it, it's that stripped feeling where it sort of starts to get tight, and then it just slips through. And so it never tightens, and so I can't lock the azimuth axis. So let's take it apart and see if we can fix it. So um, actually, first thing is to take the batteries out. Take that out. Don't need that. So these are just self-tapping screws going into the, um, the plastic housing on here. And I'm wearing gloves because this thing's full of grease, which uh, you would kind of expect. And uh, I don't like getting my hands greasy and I don't like getting grease on other things. It will be fun to put this thing in equatorial mode and then uh, put it to work on maybe some imaging, especially when I go out into the desert, into the dark skies, uh, you know, get some more, just maximize the use of my time out there. Uh, altitude screw, and then the cover comes off, and now you've got electronics in here. It's just a couple of cables here. Um, Not too small to remove, but get that off of there. So inside there, you can see the, this is the altitude motor. Uh, sorry, that's the motor. It's a little DC motor. And looks like it's got, yeah, it's got an encoder. That's an encoder on it there. And then uh, like a planetary gearbox, driving another set of gears, and then to a worm. So it's a standard worm, worm gear kind of situation. Cool, but now we're looking for the, um, down into here, underneath all these electronics. So if I pull this screw out, um, the screw doesn't look broken. I think the threads look fine on here. So I don't think it's this screw that's stripped. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that might show up there. So I think the threads on that are fine. So just carefully, um, just gonna unplug all these cables here. And this one's kind of at an angle here. the uh, main CPU chip there with Wi-Fi module uh, built in. Over here. They pack a pretty impressive amount of uh, stuff inside these little, inside this housing. It's pretty neat. Okay, and drop the screw in there, of course. 
and uh, oh, shoot. Okay, that little cover is out of there, and the screw is stuck uh, back here. Oh, almost got it. Stuck to the magnets on the motor. Okay. Yeah, so that plastic cover is covering this this black ring. Um, with this is uh, an encoder ring. So that's for there's like an optical. This here is an optical encoder. So that's so it knows the position of the uh, azimuth. And um, looks like I'm going to have to take that out. So maybe I can get that off without. Um, oh. oh, crap. They had to use Phillips screws for this. Oh, man. Those are going to be really hard to get out. Oh, maybe not. Just have the right. Okay, there we go. Just need the right screwdriver. Might need to pull that optical, the actual optical, optical encoder out uh, as well. And I'll start with seeing if I can just take this disc off. And one more, just four of these flathead Phillips screws. These are in there pretty tight, so make sure you have a good screwdriver and the right size. The little small one was too small, it would strip them. This one's perfect. Okay, now does that just come off of there? I'm gonna be careful. I don't, uh, yep. Just don't wanna damage the little plastic uh, ring here. You can see the spaces in there. Those are so as it turns, a little, little optical sensor can, you know, count the number of spaces or whatever, however those things work. I'm not an electronics guy. Aha. We can definitely see. Yes, okay. Um, can see the clamping ring, and I'm pretty sure can see the problem. Right, so this here is the uh, clamp that locks the altitude axis, that locks the axis. That screw goes in the side here. You'll see the screw come in there. Right, there's the screw. And uh, so it should thread into this side here, but it's not. And I can see it looks like there's Looks like maybe there was a threaded insert or something that's pressed, that's like come out. Now, okay, so we see the problem. Yeah, it looks like there's like a helicoil insert that came, that got pressed out somehow. Question is how the heck would I remove this clamp now? So I think, Okay, there's a set screw. I think there's a set screw in a ring. I need to loosen that, and then I think this whole assembly drops out the bottom. Whoop. Okay, well that comes off. Now I know that. There's a set screw in this ring. Here. Set screw there, and then I'm pretty sure this ring is actually like a threaded ring, and this comes off. This. And it feels like it's loosening. Be really careful not to strip uh, these little little set screws. Okay, is there only one? Oh, there's another one on the other side. Yeah, okay. Hard to rotate it around there. I should have left that base part on there, but oh, that feels loose. Did I just rotate it all the way around? Oh, it's it's loose. 
spoons. It's unthreading, but it's, it's um, um, yeah, like there's burrs or maybe the set screw is still catching a little bit. So I'm gonna try backing these set screws out even more. Let's see if it'll come off now. There we go. Uh, there's a roller bearing in there. So this is, um, yeah, stuck to the ring. There's like a little bit of oil. Uh, is a, the top uh, part of the of a roller bearing assembly. So you can see the roller bearing in there now. Now I'm thinking this whole thing should just drop out the bottom here. Let's see if that. Yep. 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 Okay. Ooh. It's kind of nice looking. Look at that. That's the. Uh, it's another roller bearing, and there's a bearing, and there's this part is kind of chewed up. There's the worm, uh, the worm gear. There's a bearing and a roller bearing. So there's a lot of bearings in here. If you're wondering why telescope mounts are expensive, well, there's a lot of hardware that goes into them. Look at all these little parts that have to be made. Some of these are maybe generic. A lot of these are definitely custom parts. So the fact that they're able to make and sell this thing for, you know, what they are is um, rather impressive. Okay, so now this part, this clamp part that I'm having problems with, this is like the last thing in here. And how the heck does that come out? Looks like maybe it just presses out from this side. Yep, there it goes. Okay. And there it is. So, this is the part that is um, broken, that's damaged. The threads are stripped. This is supposed to thread into there. And uh, yeah, there's just no threads at all in there anymore. It's just completely blown through. So, uh, we gotta figure out a solution to that. The solution that I came up with was to drill out the M3 tapped threads and retap them to M4. This is a rather delicate operation as there's kind of just barely enough meat on these clamp parts here to make the holes any larger. The next challenge is that the stock locking screw has this turned down reduced diameter section. This appears so that the screw will clear some part of the rotating mechanism in the azimuth assembly. And I don't have a lathe, so this is my makeshift lathe. It started with just trying to use a file to grind it down, but this uh, was taking way too long. 